So cost control and chargeback. Um, my name is James Holden. I'm the product manager for On Command Insight, and I'm going to give you an overview of uh, use case around cost control and chargeback. So the goal, really, with understanding the costs is uh, keeping those operational and capital costs within the kind of the budget that the organization wants. And understanding where that spend is, what you have, who's using it, what's it being consumed for, um, is really what people are looking to do. The challenge with that, though, is there's many different ways to optimize the costs within an infrastructure. Um, I, there's really difficulties in understanding where the waste is in the environment, and then accurately being able to match the supply to the demand. And so where OCI really comes into its own and helps with that is with the right sizing of environments, uh, understanding the things like IO density and the density of actually the consumed resources so you can squeeze as much from those resources or sweat those assets as hard as possible. And then if you are looking at the, the hybrid infrastructure and the stuff out in the cloud, how you can kind of elastically bounce up into consuming those resources, but doing it with <coughs> constructs of the purchasing models and the, uh, the cost control that's in the organization. So we have the ability also to collect this data, um, divide it into the different uh, resource groupings, things like the business units, the end user groups, and um, assign those to chargeback and showback reporting capabilities. But understanding what the uh, actual costs are associated with the different end customers' usage of the infrastructure is highly critical. And challenge is, who is actually consuming those resources? Being able to bring that data into the tool set in an automatic way or a, a manual way and making sure it's up to date and accurate is a, is a hard task for uh, products that don't have the abilities that on-command insight helps with. So we can produce those reports, we can feed them to billing systems, we can have them delivered to um, email addresses, to SharePoint locations, FTP drops, um, that then will give provide things Provide like trending information on these costs as well, I mean. Yes, yes we can. And that is not just on the um, um, on-premise infrastructure, but out in the cloud as well. On-premises infrastructure, not in the cloud. <laughs> So we've got a, a few different ways that we can do this. So there's the out-of-the-box reports that come in, in our data warehouse. And then we also have um, an ability to go out into the automation store. It's automationstore.netapp.com. And then we can pull reports and solution packs, and we can pull scripts down that will help with these chargeback and optimization use cases. So I'll jump now into uh, so James, you're, you're, you're extracting information from Azure and AWS as, as what the costs are on a, so uh, you can trend that sort of stuff? From AWS, yes. We, we will pull in the billing information from AWS and then um, feed it to create uh, cost reports of that. So what that actually looks like, it's a report that- I had this last year. <laughs> <laughs> There's other solutions too. Um, is, is a report that looks just like this. So this is actually, um, some of our internal spend in my um, on command insight group. So I've got 156 machines that are running out in AWS at the moment. Um, I've got some EBS volumes out there, and I'm, this is my my spend and what that spend's actually broken down by. Um, I can do all the different services. I can do the stranded EBS volumes. I can show you the costs associated with them. So a stranded EBS volume, if you ever provisioned an EC2 instance, the first EBS volume that comes with it, when you terminate it, the EC2 instance, that also gets terminated. But any subsequent EBS volumes, they don't, they stay around. So if you're not good at your housekeeping, those can keep mounting up. And the cost of storage out in the cloud is actually quite expensive. And when you're not actually got any virtual machine that can connect to it, um, you're just wasting money. So here is a picture of um, spend, it's not actually, huge amount, we're talking 87 cents at the moment per, <laughs> per this one, but it's, it's still, it's out there and um, if those were bigger numbers, you would start getting... Work. So who's at the top of your shame back list? Who's at the top of this one at the moment? Um, <laughs> there's a variety of um, different resources here that have got virtual machines um, out there. I can actually tie these back to the, um, the creator of those. We pull in the tags from AWS as well 
and because we've got an automatic association with the tags to the virtual machine, mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to ashamed on, <laughs> on the tech field day one particular person in the organisation. Um, actually, luckily, it's not me today. <laughs> normally, That's what we were I've done this demo of. before, and at the top of the NIST is uh, James Holden. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> very low CPU utilisation on a very big EC2 instance, but it's, it's not there. <laughs> well, yeah, all these, um, all that detail. We're sort of pulling in the billing information, but we're then also associating here, as you can see, with the performance data. So if you've got, uh, uh, AWS has got a very nice billing report. It's a beautiful billing report, um, but it doesn't tell you the utilization of the underlying assets. We've now got the performance data of all the EC2, the EBS volumes, and we've got the cost of each one of those. We can align them together. I can say that I've got very low CPU utilization on this uh, Cloud on Tap Manager virtual machine that someone spun up, and it's cost me $48 per month to run that. If I've got very low utilization on it, why don't I move it to a, a cheaper box? And now, we're not talking huge dollar amounts here, but these mount up. This is only 156 virtual machines in the environment when you've got thousands, if not tens of thousands of VMs out there these are start, numbers start to accumulate. So this is a really valuable tool. You can see who's got the sort of artifact information out there that is costing money. Do you have a predictive element of this as well? So we can, say, take an application, do an analysis against it, and have it define you know, what it would cost on Azure, what it would cost on AWS. Uh, like yeah, I got or, or even better, um, Looking into it and telling, um, hey, do this or do that to tweak the machines. Yeah, so we 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 do have right sizing reports that will will go a long way to answering that question. There's um, a whole different host of different metrics we can pull in to make those. Possible. And we've also had with people um, a great report that will do the comparison. You can pull in the things like the amount of memory used, amount of yeah, um, but also the oh, disk lost and the word at the ingress, moment, the, uh, the pricing list. Well, sure, it, it's yeah. got to be based on something. Yeah, so you can then do the comparison of the pricing uh -huh. list, and you know what the memory you, um, you've specified, you know how many cores you've specified, you can do the, the like for like. And if you then got things like low utilization of those, we can do a, a cost optimization so that if you then moved it from you know, 16 cores down to 8 cores and went from 50% utilization, you've now gone to 80% utilization on those cores, you, you might have saved $100 per month in doing that sure. on that one budget. And we can do that on, on mass. And then, and then the, the additional component that would be very beneficial in, in that sort of scenario is comparing it to what it would cost to run it on-prem. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Um, the benefit of the, the cloud is that it's a very distinct price list. And it's very yes. high. Well, if, if you um, enter your, your cost variables for your own well, you on prem. Absolutely could. Sure. Yep. That's definitely a, a, a creatable report. Yep. Um, so I'll show you the, the automation store. Um, here it is on command insights section of it. I've got a whole host of, of different reports out there that will go into the, the kind of chargeback. Um, the capacity planning, you know, consolidated chargeback, chargeback a right, different business unit. If I wanted to uh, look what they look like, here's a preview image of a chargeback report that can be created. So different company, the spend, the line of business that's spending it, um, the projects associated with it. And that can also trend this over time, and produce uh, little line graphs and really expose those costs to the business. Now. Um, creating the kind of annotations that we talked about um, to make these things happen, things like adding the business entities to the or the applications. It's a case of I create an annotation. I've got a whole wealth of annotations that's been added to this system. And there's 65 of them out there. It, a, uh, let's call it business uh, business object. I'll give it a and I can choose what kind of annotation construct I want. We'll usually call it text. Um, a list is quite nice, though. And I'll do uh, biz1, um, biz2, and biz3. I save that. And then I can query my data, and I can add those different constructs. So here I've got all my flex files, and if I wanted to then 
um, filter that down by a specific uh, category. Let's do it by a, well, here's all the storage grid um, buckets in the environment. Let's do it by those. Oops. I've storage. And what I can do is I can select all those and then I can add an annotation to it. I can add an application, I can add a business entity. Let's add that um, business object that we had before. And there I go, click save, and that would then save that against all of those different resources. Um, if I wanted to save this query, I can save it, and then I can associate that with an annotation rule. Come over here, annotation rules. Um, and these then automatically keep that data up to date. So if a new storage grid bucket appears in the environment, it will automatically get associated with that. In the Vsphere environment, can you use uh, Vsphere tags uh, to populate uh, the annotation uh, uh, of uh, VM uh, object? Yeah, so we can pull the tags in, we can do it via a script. Um, we could do it via an update to our data source that would actually then make sure that those tags were aligned. The tag has, the, the annotation has to be in the system in the first place for us to be okay. able to pull it, but... Then you um, can synchronize. Yeah, then it can be synchronized. Right. Um, any other questions on the cost control or the, the chargeback or the reporting capabilities? Yeah, slightly related to cost. How do you license OCI? <laughs> slightly related to cost. Yeah, so we, we license by um, the, the storage constructs. Um, so that's the terabytes of uh, what we see as managed storage. And we class that managed storage as the unformatted capacity of the virtual or physical disks in that infrastructure. So an EBS volume um, gets presented, it gets, it's, you've got an EBS volume, it's 100 terabytes, there's no used capacity at the moment, but we will charge the 100 mm -hmm. terabytes of that. Um, the raw capacity really is what we do on the on-premises infrastructure, it's mm -hmm. the amount of disks in the actual array itself. 